Twilight Zone review. Um, this is a season five episode, number eight of the season run. Uh, so yeah, season five, again, you know, some really good episodes, some of my favorites, but if you averaged it out, um, it was definitely had lost a little bit of its touch, I think. Um, but we have a very special cameo, Robbie, the robot, (laughs) he's in two twilight zones. Um, you know, the other one's more of a cameo. This is like his real debut, Robbie, he was in law. He played the robot in Lost in Space, um, known from Forbidden Planet. And um, Ashley did a painting of Robbie the Robot, so you can check that out below, mm-hmm. as well as a link to a quick video about it. Um, here's Ashley with the episode info. Uncle Simon originally aired 11 15 63, written by Rod Serling, producer Bert Granite, um, director Don Siegel who also happened to direct Invasion of the Body Snatchers, uh, Escape from Alcatraz, and Dirty Harry. So those are, I mean, I, I love uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and Escape from Dirty Alcatraz Harry's a classic. I've never seen Escape from Alcatraz. Oh, it's great. It is great. This is the first time there's a movie you've seen that I haven't. That's not true. And usually it's the other way around. Eh. Um, cast, Uncle Simon Polk, Cedric Hardwick, Barbara Polk, Constance Ford, Schwimmer, Ian Wolfe, Police officer John McClane and robot Dion Hansen. Police officer? Where is there a police officer? I have no idea. That's just what it says. There's no police officer. Uh, I think you're right. Maybe they cut a scene out. Could be. Or maybe that's a misprint. You know, this book is famous for its misprints. Huh, that's interesting. Because there's only the three characters plus the robot. Yeah, that's. I don't know what that's supposed to be. That's interesting. That's Weird. really interesting. Weird. Um, Ratings-wise, for whatever... Do you remember why we... This is like one of the episodes we like, you know, it's like one of the ones that it's like one of our episodes. Do you remember why? Because it's fantastic. What's your score? My score is a 10. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. What? Yeah. I knew you were going to say that. You're giving this a 10? Yes, I love this episode. I love it. I'm giving it a five. Five? No, I I like it because of Robbie and stuff, but I... I'm shocked that you're giving it a 10. Maybe. You're very picky with your scores. I know. I, I was going to give it a 7.5. Okay. Um, the re- There's several reasons I gave it a 10. One, because of like... I I'm, just- giving, I'm giving it an 8 because... You don't have to change it. No, no, no. Because I, th- I, re- I remember one of the first times we ever um, watched any Twilight Zones. There were a few that we, they, we turned out a marathon. We were hanging out on a New Year's Eve a few years ago. And um, we barely hung out at the time. And I remember there was the um, Frisbee one. Yeah. I think it just happened to be the first couple you ever saw. Maybe that's And, like, that's why it kind of has a special place. So when we're going back watching these, you know, when we really started to watch these and review them and stuff, you hadn't seen a good amount of them. But those were ones where you were like, oh, yeah, I remember when you, you turned the marathon on that New Year's Eve. Um, these are some of the episodes we watched together. Maybe that's why I have like an emotional connection with it, but there's several reasons I like this episode. I love the banter between the two of them. Um, I think it's hilarious. All the jabs and like insulting comments they say to each other. It's so funny. This one is very quotable. This is one that you and I quoted each other. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So it makes me laugh every time I think of that. Robbie's in it, which makes it even better. Um, and I just, I don't know. I just think it's funny. I just think it's a really funny episode and I I, like I it. feel like it has like an Alfred Hitchcock kind of vibe. Uh, it's a, it's a very unique vibe. It is a unique vibe. I don't know if it's Alfred Hitchcock, but. Yeah, I, I definitely give it an eight. It's a good episode. It's, um, definitely not one of the known, well-known pop culture, no. you know, favorites. Um, I, I think if anything, people might know this one because of Robbie the Robot. Yeah. Um, so it might get overshadowed. As an episode, because there's this cameo of this like science fiction robot, you know, that fans of Lost in Space and, you know, these science fiction movies that this robot, you know, prop was in. Um, wow. A 10. I, I mean, I can see how other people would watch this episode and think it was like cheesy and dumb. I can see that 100%. But to me, it is a 10 because I want to watch it and I enjoy watching it yeah. every single time. I, I definitely give it an 8. I, I, I like the episode. I think um, 
I'm just, <clears throat> excuse Thank me. You. I'm just shocked that you gave it a, a 10, but I, know. I give it an eight. It's a good episode. Um, Let's do a quick review. Yeah, go for it. Um, so basically this episode is about a uncle and a niece, Barbara and Uncle Simon. Barbara is a caretaker for Uncle Simon. He's elderly. He has a, a limp. He walks with a cane and he's an, a scientist. So she is obviously, they're both obviously miserable with each other. They ha- literally hate each other and they talk about to each other like they hate each other all the time they just are like insulting each other constantly with these ridiculous long-winded insults he calls her an angular turnip he says she has the feminine femininity of a high button shoe like it's it's so funny and you have to watch it just to watch the interaction between the two of them um but she basically says to him the only reason i am here that I've been here for the past 25 years taking care of you so I can see you die. Like, that's how much I hate She you. says, on the day of your funeral, I'm going to come home and open a bottle of wine. Yeah. She basically is just there for his money because he's mad rich. He's, I guess, he's probably like a famous scientist back in his time. Do, do you think that's where he is? Yeah, he, money? you know, he. it sounds like he worked for the college because if she doesn't follow the thing. Yeah. And again, he 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 passes away in the middle of the episode. That's not that's not the big twist at all. Um, we'll warn you guys if Ashley's going to go there. Yeah. But um, yeah, it seems like he was. You know, he's like this very rich, well known scientist. Yeah. And clearly, for the time, he invents this thing that has a mind of its own. No, he's like very uh, like yeah. skilled. Yeah. yeah. He's probably. I would guess he's probably famous. Yeah. Um, he's probably re- semi retired. Yeah. You know? Super rich, and he's just a miserable old dude, and she's just there basically for his money. Um, one of the things that we always say is he always asks for hot chocolate, and he always tells her, if it's not hot enough, I'll throw it on the floor. So <laughs> yeah, he's miserable, and, and she's miserable, and they're both guilty of, um, you know, it seems kind of equal. Yeah. Like, he, you know, he's kept her there because he's disabled and needs her help. But she's only there to, you know, get his money the day he drops dead. And she's basically hoping he drops dead. And he even comments things like, if you had any guts at all, you would have murdered me years ago. Yeah. Yeah. That was good, babe. That sounded just like Uncle Simon. So eventually he, they get, they, she tries to, he has a laboratory in the basement that he, she is not allowed in. She's curious to see it. Well, when, when they're reading the will, he, it, he, he. At the end, the the lawyer in charge of the estate or whatever says, your uncle dropped off uh, some changes uh, Mm -hmm. last week. Mm -hmm. Assuming after that opening argument, he probably did it. Yeah. And it says, in order to qualify for, you know, the house and all the money and and trust and everything, you must uh, take care of my experiments. And then they come to find that the experiment is is this robot. Yeah. Full size. Full size, you know. Um, you'll, there'll be a picture below. Um, you know, it's a big clunky robot, fa- you know, a famous celebrity robot, probably the most famous thing from this episode. Yeah. You know, he, sure. he's, he's still getting lost in space residuals. Oh yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it has the mind of her uncle basically. Mm-hmm. And as it goes on, he starts to get smarter and basically it's keeping her in the same situation. Um, I, I don't think we need to give away give it away. I think we can let the uh hivers know to to watch it. Yeah. But um I the one the one of the re- I, I don't I'm not crazy about the ending kinda here, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. You know, it's kind of a loop. Yeah, it's like, a loop. Like she ends up in the same exact situation as the beginning, taking care it's like you know, it, I don't know. I wasn't I mean, I guess she kind of deserves it, but at the same time, it would have been. I think there could have been more to the story. Yeah, like like she just accepts it. Like she's just traumatized and accepts it. Yes. Or I I think she should have had a little more fight in her. She could have thought her way out of this one very easily. I mean, just chop the robot's legs off and keep them in the basement. Yeah. Or take some of the money that she has that's now hers, invest it, and take that money and then leave. The situation. Yeah, I think it's set up in a trust, so like she only gets the recurring interest, which is a lot of money, but the stipulation is you have to stay in the house to continue getting the interest off of all his stocks, bonds, and everything. Um, But yeah, she could definitely, you know, do something with it. Um, 
But she basically, like, lets herself be put back in the position that she was in in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, so she needs a little bit more. I guess, like, he broke her spirit, basically. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's it's actually kind of sick when you it's, really think it about really it. It really is sick. You know, it has a big clunky robot in it. It's it's done in a comedic way for the most part. But when you really break it down, this is like, you know, somebody that's been traumatized. Yeah. Even though she's, you know, has her own guilty stuff. Um you know, she sped up the process. Yeah. Um, unintentionally, I think, initially. It was 100% unintentional, um, I think. But you could see the joy in her reaction to what happened. Yeah. I think that it's crazy how she's basically living with the fact that this man hated her so much that even after his passing, he wanted to make sure that she was miserable for the rest of her life. Yeah, it's pretty sick. It's really it's sick. A, in that regard, you can look at it like a psychological thriller. That's also why I like it. Because yeah, that's it, interesting. It's a on a human level, it is just like unfathomable that somebody would do that to somebody else. Yeah, especially I, a family member. I think that's why I I almost see like a Alfred Hitchcock okay, kind I of can vibe. See, I can see where you're going. With um, that. and 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 you know, from the uncle, the actor that played the uncle, I just get like an Alfred Hitchcock kind of vibe. Okay. All right, I guess we'll leave it there. So. My final score is an eight. It's a good episode. Um, I was surprised by Ashley's ten because <laughs> you were shocked. Well, there's only a couple tens. Um, I don't know. You liked it that much. That's great. I do. All right. Enjoy, everybody. Later.